Well, welcome class. This is uh, your instructor, Mr. Roosevelt, and today we're going to be covering an interview with an artist, part one, which is our practice uh, interview. And the good news is, is we're going to take this real slow because if you get the practice right, then you'll get everything right on the advance of part two. So first of all, I'm on Canvas right now, so you can see the same instructions that I'm reading right here, right on Canvas for interview of an artist, part one, your practice interview. It says in this assignment, interview with an artist, part one, uh, you will learn how to develop and create your final interview by doing the following practice interview. This exercise is in three steps. I'm dividing it like this because I want you to do each step and think about it because these steps are going to be the same steps that you'll do in your final interview. So it says, first of all, you're going to find a name that's uh, in the list and identify the artist I have given for you in this practice exercise. Without going any further, I'll read number two in a second, but let's go down here to the bottom. And here's this list I'm talking about. It says, list of artists for the practice interview exercise. And it's got your name down on this side under student assigned. And on the other side is, this, is the artist that I want you to practice with. And it gives you the page number. So you'll find the page number in your book uh, right now or next to your name right there, okay? So with that said and done, let's go back up here to the top. Sounds like somebody's outside driving fast. It's probably trying to do this assignment. Okay, next it says, number two, turn to the page number listed next to your artist uh, and, 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 find the read uh, and find and read the section that discusses your artist. So we're going to do that right now. Down below I have a copy of the script of our textbook right here and I'm on page 361 right there it's uh, the second page of the interview and it has the picture but I want to get to 360 which is the first page and it's right here I put a red box around it because I wanted to identify this page in your book to see that I'm when you go back you'll be able to see this this uh, video right here because I'm recording it right now so you can go back and refresh your memory but there it is that's what we're going to start off with. And it says neoclassicism, but I'm marking this off because that's our artist that we're going to be looking for right there. Jacques-Louis David. Jacques-Louis David is a very famous neoclassic artist that comes right after the Rococo period. And he's focused on the French Revolution. Although the king and queen don't know that he's making these pictures that are supposed to be uh, kind of uh, spiriting and, and rousing up the public for a revolution. So, but, and they're buying his paintings too, which is interesting. So he's selling the paintings to them at the same time. We're going to see that these paintings are really promoting uh, this sense of revolution. And it says so right in here, but I've copied this section down already in, uh, in a PowerPoint presentation, which I'm going to call up right now because that makes life really smooth. It's going to be making your interview. There it is. So the purpose of this PowerPoint presentation is to do that. Let me go ahead and, and get right into this interview. Final, our final assignment right there, interview with an artist. And like I said, this is not only the practice, but you can refer to this for your final presentation because it has a lot of the good stuff right there. Let's go ahead and hit this next section right here. The purpose of this project is for you to, one, produce a research report that brings to life a renowned artist from history. So this is going to be a little bit more different than uh, the actual dry, like you copy something out of a book and blah, blah, blah. You, and this particular thing, and, the, and, and I know the instructors always want you to be more original and think it through, but not a lot of time, and so you just say, let me copy it. The good news in this assignment it, is you're required to copy. You must copy. You cannot make stuff up. And you're thinking, whoa, that's going to be a big success. I can get this A instantly. Well, you're copying it but you're going to change some words around because you're going to make this like it's a script. That's right, it's going to look just like if you were doing a play and so you're going to take the standard words that are like we're going to see in the textbook and I'm going to change them around so it becomes an interview. So I'll take a statement and I'll make part of it into a question and the other part into an answer. And that's the way you're going to do it. You're going to come up with 10 question and answers. Some of these questions and answers will be featured uh, the artist's background, how he grew up, his interests, his uh, people he studied with, some of the questions that must cover at least three of the paintings or art pieces, and in detail, not just a one-liner like I did this picture, you'll see in a second, I have an example, 
And finally, you're going to have to conclude it. So I'm going to have this thing all set up just like that. Let's go through this, and here's what I've got right there. I, I already showed you that the, the text it came from, and uh, this right here is we're going to be dealing with people, events, and ideas that influence them. Like I said, these are some of the very important things. So when did they live? Uh, birth and death and date. You're going to see a little bit of that in this introduction right here, but you can give that in a kind of a pre... Uh, you don't have to ask the artist these questions right here. You can give it like an introduction, and we'll have an introduction to the one I'm that I'm going to be showing to you. So you'll see how that introduction can work in with the interviewer can actually announce these parts right here. The art movement that they're aligned with, this is very important right there. So we're talking about people, ideas that influence them. Uh, the movement they're aligned with, uh, follow the artists that they knew and or worked with, and finally, their personal issues. So we're going from uh, the people that in influence them and their ideas and the, during that influence, and then finally, the issues they have at the end, and the concerns that they make uh, unique and shape their legacy right there, which is why they are a great artist, because they've contributed to society in a particular way. Okay, this is the next slide right here. Establishing an interesting opening to your interview. So, to make your inter interview a little bit more just exciting right there, I'm going to ask you, not in this practice one particularly, but in your final one right there, you're going to establish, uh, whether it's going to be a standard interview that you're doing in a studio, and of course it sounds like how can you interview, you'll probably have to either interviewing yourself, being both of these parts, or I talked to a student already and she wanted to see if she can work together with somebody else, you are, it's okay if you have somebody else be your interviewer, but you will be the artist in your own report, and you will write your own report, and the other person who's helping you, they can get extra credit for helping you, but they have to write their own report. And maybe they want you to be their interviewer, and you can get extra credit. But if you can't find anybody to work with you, then you're going to be doing two acting jobs at once right there, and we'll see how that goes right there. And it all relies on the script. So when we get to the script, you'll see how that goes. So the interview can be, uh, could be like in a restaurant, outdoor, rally, sports. You don't have to actually have it in a studio. You can have the style. It could be a standard question, or it could be like on TV, an entertainment show, a game show. You still have to hit those 10 questions right there, but you can make it a little bit more exciting. Uh, I've seen students do that in, an, in, a, res in a restaurant right there. And, and the uh, artist comes walking by, and then the guy sitting at the table starts asking him some questions. That's kind of fun. The interviewer is a standard news reporter, or it could be a fellow artist, or a store clerk, or a police officer. You can decide how you want this interview to work right there. It could be a funny thing where a guy gets pulled over, and he's an artist, and they get talking about his artwork. So all these ideas is designed to make this a little bit more fun and interesting for you. Okay, finally, personal issues and concerns that focus. I want you to focus on that shaped them, shaped the artist, and made them the unique uh, artist that they were. Okay, let's go ahead and the next one. Identify critical facts that are true and critical uh, to the artist's life. So it might be a true fact, but it's got to be important to the artist's life. So I want you to use at least three. Whoa, oh, oh, okay. At least three sources to create your text. In other words, you can use our your art uh, form, our textbook right there. That's okay. You can use um, uh, you can use Wikipedia. That's fine. You can use Bur uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. That's fine. You can get those on Google. You can research anything else on Google, but you must you must identify every time you use a source with a footnote, and you'll see it in the uh, in the script that I'm going to be giving to you. There's a little footnote, and in the footnote, like footnote number one, it says, "I got this quote from." In the, in the beginning, I'm getting it all from art form. So you need to use all three, you need to do three quotes. You can't do it all from one. I want you to research it, at least look at three different sources right there. So you're going to see our text, our form is one, Wikipedia and Encycl uh, Encyclopedia Britannica, and any other online site that is reputable that you can Google information on your artist. So you will have to footnote and identify all your sources to get credit. Otherwise, you're going to be some credit on that because it's a research paper. I want you to feel free, however, to invent and insert fun or surprising expressions that do not alter the facts. And you'll see how I'm going to do that in my interview. So you can say, wow, or something. You don't have to like copy every word identical if you want to insert 
some uh, expressions, that's okay. But the facts have got to come right from your source. Okay. Uh, this is, in fact, the copy. This is neoclassicism. This, this uh, section right here comes straight out of the book. It was that little picture I showed you before at the bottom. And it was on page uh, 360. And it says, with the beginning of the French Revolution in 1789, the luxurious life that uh, centered on the French court ended abruptly and French society was disrupted and transformed. That was because of the revolution, you guessed it. Uh, one of the artists who led the way to the revolutions in both art and politics was a painter, Jacques-Louis David. Uh, it looks like David, but it's pronounced David. Uh, believing that the arts should serve a beneficial social purpose in a time of social and governmental reform, he rejected what was saw, seen as the frivolous and uh, immorality of the, era, of the aristocrats and also the Rococo style, which we covered in there, and that was kind of a, a colorful style that just was about a lot of fluff. And instead, he, he changed the, the whole direction of the painting to, uh, like in the painting, The Oath of the Herodotai, uh, figure two, this, which I just showed you, and you'll see it again. David pioneered an austere style uh, called neoclassicism. The term refers to such, to much of the subject matter in neoclassic art uh, was Roman because Rome uh, represented a republic, a non-hereditary uh, government. So, in other words, it was all about coming up with uh, a government in his paintings that reflected what he liked social change to happen, and which ended up, like I said, in the French Revolution. Notice that I put a footnote here. Number one, footnote source one, art forms, page 360. This uh, info would be added to your research paper and its bibliography. So you're going to have a bibliography at the end of your research paper where you can list all your resources. Because you don't want to keep putting down art forms all the time. You put the one here at the end. You may use it again somewhere else. You may put three maybe also from art forms. But when you go back to your bibliography, it references the uh, the page number and the source right there. Okay. Now, oh, and this one here, this is straight out of here. The next page right there, I've changed and I uh, and I changed the words. And I changed the words around. It says, today we have with us one of the most important artists of the, of the neoclassic movement. Now, look at what I had before. With the beginning of the French Revolution, the luxurious this. So I, what I did was I introduced, uh, instead of this section right here, one of the artists who led the way, I put down, today we have with us one of the artists. So I took off part of that beginning, I, I cut it right out, and I colored this in red because I wanted to show you how I changed it, because I put down we have, and before it just says one of the artists. So I say today we have, so it gives you a sense that the artist is in the studio with me, and of course he is. Neoclassic movement in France, I also specified that, so when you go through this, you'll see that in the previous uh, screen, it didn't say a movement in France, I added that in, but it was all about French Revolution, so I didn't change, I didn't give any misinformation. And I put it right there at the bottom, I said both art and polish is with us right now. So I made it, instead of like off in the future, I'm just documenting, I'm bringing the artist into the situation. Is with us right now, painter Jacques-Louis David. And uh, at this point, I'm going to make some more changes. I'm going to get rid of this believe me part. There we go. Jacques-Louis David is with us right now. Jacques Monsieur David, believing that the arch should serve a beneficial social purpose in a time of social and governmental reform, then he says he rejected. See, that's a problem right there because I'm talking to, I don't want to talk to him in the third person, so. You. So with us right now, painter Jacques-Louis David, why did you reject what you saw as the frivolous immor uh, immorality of the aristocratic Rococo style? Excuse me, my tongue is getting tied. Uh, and then it says, believing that the arch should serve a beneficial social purpose in time of social government. It's, I'm going to change that right now again, too. So now this is Monsieur David. Why did you reject St. Rococo? And he says, what you saw was the frivolous immorality of style believing 
that the arch should serve a beneficial social purpose. And what I'm trying to do is I'm going to make this the statement that he's going to say. So this is David saying this. So now he says, Monsieur David, why did you reject the artistic style of the Rococo? And now here's the statement. I changed all the words around. Because I saw it as a frivolous, frivolous immorality, believing that the arch should serve a beneficial social purpose in a time of social and governmental reform. Notice how I changed the him to I, because I. So now we're getting it almost like some person's talking here, the interviewer, and the next person is Jacques-Louis Davy. I'm going to change it one more time. Come on, change one more time. Because I saw it as a frivolous and more, I believe. Change that part. And then finally, the last slide right here shows it actually written down like it looks like it's in a script, where you have the narrate, narrator's, uh, interviewer's uh, words he's going to say. So if you had somebody reading this, they would say, Today we have with us one of the most important artists of the neoclassic movement in France. With the beginning of the French Revolution in 1789, the luxurious lifestyle centered on the French court ended abruptly, and the French society was disrupted and transformed. As the social structure and values changed, so tastes also changed. One of the artists who led the way to revolutions in both art and politics is with us right now. Let us welcome painter Jacques-Louis David. Monsieur David, why did you reject the aristocratic, aristocratic pardon me, uh, style of the Rococo? And this is what Jacques-Louis David would say. Or if this is your paper, this is what you would say. You'd have your friend read all of this, and you'd have a short answer down here. Because I saw it as a frivolous uh, immorality, I believe that the arts should serve a beneficial social purpose in a time uh, of so social and governmental reform. And that would give you a question and an answer, which would be one of the three. You're supposed to do three in this practice. And, uh, and up here I did the same thing. All I did, and you'll see this in your, in your, uh, when you review it, I changed the interviewer to Walter Cronkite. Walter Cronkite is a very famous uh, news reporter of the 1960s. And I remember him because he was, uh, on, he was on CBS, he was on everywhere. He was very important. So I gave him a name. So down here, when Jacques-Louis David talks, he says, Well, because, Walter, I saw it as... And now it becomes even more friendly. So I keep massaging the script so it sounds like we're really sitting there talking to somebody. And initially, you have to remember, this was straight out of the book. It was straight out of the book with the red things continually changing till it finally looked like it was a good... Uh, so let's move on right there because I'm running out of time. Here's the picture. Jacques-Louis David, the subject of the author of the variety, is a story of virtue and readiness to die for liberty. In this painting, I captured. So what I'm doing right here in this example is I'm talking about a piece of art. You have to talk about three pieces of art. And I'm just using, again, the paper work that's right out of the book right there. And I'm changing all the sentences so it's all in first person. I give revolutionary leaders in France inspiration inspiring images, so you can see. And there's number two, that's the second footnote for this, is, which is on page 361. Okay, so that completes that. I'm going to go ahead and drop this down and show. Drop down. And uh, we don't need that, but we do need this. So right now, when you get online, you're going to see this video. It's going to be in place of this picture right here. I'm going to insert it in. And then you'll find your name down here, and you'll find the artist, you'll find the page, and then you're going to go through the same process that I just went through, but you're saying, where's all that information? I'm going to put this video right here in place of this so you can see the video and complete this assignment. And now I'm running out of time. So, with that, I will talk to you during our Zoom meeting, and I can answer any questions on the phone if you give me a call. I'm glad that you had an opportunity to listen to this. Let me go ahead and turn it off, and we'll get back to everybody a little bit later. Thank you so much.